Shalom and blessings, warriors of Yahuwah and the truth. We are continuing on with I am Yahuwah, that is my name. We are in a state-imposed religion. The, te the teachings hatched at the Catechetical School of Alexandria persist in every modern seminary today. The apostasy falling away from Torah became institutionalized and men's traditions were set up to conceal their former pagan origins. The doctrinal descendants of the Circus Fathers still use the title Father, when the only father there is is our Creator. Identifying the Fathers, Constantine, our heritage. For centuries after the resurrection of Yahusha, false teachers arose to draw away disciples after themselves. Just as Paul predicted would occur, Acts 20. Today we look back and call these men the C-H-U-R-C-H fathers, or assembly fathers, circus fathers, Pantanus, Augustine, Tertullian, Jerome, Epiphanius, or Epiphanius, and a dozen others guided the doctrines, and a great falling away occurred through these elders, bishops, or overseers. They do nothing Yahuwah said, and everything he said not to do. Yahuwah tells us not to learn the ways of the heathen, nor serve him in their way. Deuteronomy 12, 30-32 Yahusha told us, Man does not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of Yahuwah. With this in mind, we see the world learning the opposite. We revise the paganism and do it anyway. Eggs, rabbits, trees, steeples, statues, holy water, wreaths, Easter, Christmas, Sunday, monks, and more. He tells us to rest on the seventh day. So we rest on the first day and work on the seventh. He tells us what we may eat. We tell him we're going to eat at everything we want to eat. He tells us to call on his name, Yahuwah. Instead, we call him by generic terms. Even former pagan proper nouns, G-O-D or Baal equals L-O-R-D. He tells us to observe specific appointed times, so we use our own reasoning, mostly based on formerly pagan observances we've adapted to fit what we want them to mean. We follow men who scorned the Nazarim and wanted nothing in common with the Yahudim, admitted to by their own words. Yahuwah's festivals reflect the redemption plan for Yasharal, but were forsaken. Daniel 7.25 All the nations of the earth are invited to engraft into the commonwealth of Yahshirah through the covenant. Ephesians 2.8-13 But it's called legalism. When anyone obeys, legalism equates to heresy. If we are legal, if we are legal then we are true citizens of Yahshirah. If we practice lawlessness, we are impostors and usurping what is not ours to claim. We cannot simultaneously claim to be Yahusha's followers and not obey Torah. If we claim to know him, then we obey the commandments. 1. Yehuqan and 3. The 4th century circus father, Epiphanius, gave a, gave a detailed description of the Nazarene. <clears throat> We shall now especially consider heretics who call themselves Nazarene. They are mainly Jews and nothing else. They make use not only of the New Testament, but they also use in a way the Old Testament of the Jews, for they do not forbid the books of the law, the prophets, and the writings, so that they are approved of by the Jews, from whom the Nazarenes do not differ in anything and they profess all the dogmas pertaining to the prescriptions of the, of the law and to the customs of the Jews, except they believe in Messiah. They preach that there is but one G.O.D. 
and his son, they spelt it here, Yeshua, but it's Yehusha, the Messiah. But they are very learned in the Hebrew language, for they, like the Jews, read the whole law, then the prophets. They differ from the Jews because they believe in Messiah and from the Christians in that they are, to this day, bound to the Jewish rites, such as circumcision, the Sabbath, and other ceremonies. They have the good news according to Matthew in its, in its entirety in Hebrew. For it is clear that they still preserve this in the Hebrew alphabet as it was originally written. In stark contrast to the Nazarene, Epiphanius would forbid the law, prophets, and writings, Tanakh, often referred to by Yahusha. He mentions how the document of Matiyahu is written in the Hebrew script. The Sabbath observance, the weekday blessed in, at creation, was observed by Yahusha, yet those who walk as he walked are heretics. This record hits on how doctrinally arrogant things had become very early and why Christian doctrines are so different from the real first followers of Yahusha. After Irene, um, Irenaeus, a new flagrant error crept in called apostolic succession, along with the idea that the CHURCH hierarchy could supersede any commandment and usurp the name Yasharal for itself. There is evidence the Nazarene sect continued to exist until at least the 13th century. The Catholic writings of Bonacursus, entitled Against the Heretics, refers to Nazarene, who were also called Passagini. This term meant they lived in the passes and cliffs hiding from the cruelty of the circus fathers. Waldensians was another term for us, a reference to the valleys, walled hills, in which we hid away from those hating us. Bonacursus says, Let those who are not yet acquainted with them please note how perverse their belief and doctrine are. First, they teach that we should obey the law of Moses, according to the letter the Sabbath and circumcision, and the legal precepts still being in force. Furthermore, to increase their error, they condemn and reject all the circus fathers and the whole Roman CHURCH. -H. We were still around in the 13th century. Today, we who are Nazarene still obey that old law, the covenant as it is written, and we still reject all the circus fathers and the, Ro the whole Roman CHURCH. We are accused of being Jewish, but we are really made up of all the lost tribes in captivity among the nations. As the prodigal son found himself and returned to the covenant, the father's household, Torah observant ones, we are those described at Revelation 12 and 14. 1. We hold to the testimony of Yahusha. 2. We obey the commandments of Yahuwah. For these we are branded as perverse heretics. We call on the true and only name, Yahuwah. Each time we utter, utter the Deliverer's name, Yahusha HaMashiach, we have never been part of the broad road. Turtleus, a hired accuser of Paul, spoke these words at Acts 24.5. For we have found this man a pestilent fellow and a mover of sedition among all the Yahudim throughout the world and a ringleader of the sect. G139, Heresis of the Nazarene, G3480, concordance number. The Greek word hair like hair, esis, above, gives the word heresy, translated sect. We are sure the sect being spoken of was not the, was not the Christians, because Christians developed later. Christian, the origin of the term. 
The word Christianos was used twice in the Greek text as a device of scorn, since in the ancient world it conveyed a much different sense than it does today. The use of the word Christianos did not name the sect, but it was a, a derisive, scornful label that meant they were like gullible, dumb beasts or cretins, meaning idiots. The word Christianos, Latin Christianus, was a term of scorn, traced back through a related word which history never revised, Cretan. A person afflicted with Cretanism, slang, an idiot. French Cretan, from French dialectical, deformed and mentally retarded person found in certain Alpine valleys, from vulgar Latin Christianus, Christian human being, poor fellow, from Latin Christianus. Christian, see Christian. Source, the American Heritage Dictionary of the English Language. Why the term Nazarene? The foremost reason is prophetic. We are described as a remnant of the scattered tribes by many prophets, but in, in the last days we are called by the term Nazarene as we cry out on the hills of Ephraim as Yermi, at Yermiyahu 31.6. For there shall be a day when the watchmen cry on Mount Aphraim, Arise and let us go up to Sion, to Yahuwah our Allahim. The word watchman is the Hebrew word Nazarene, and means guardians, pr protectors, preservers, and also means branches as in descendants. Immediately, we see the connection with Yahusha's word, words about him being the root and his students being the branches, the offspring of his teachings. The name by which we are called has no Greek roots. The Hebrew roots of our name are profound. We guard Yahuwah's name and his word, the covenant with Yasharal. The 1945 Encyclopedia Americana has this to say under the topic G-O-D. G-O-D common Teutonic word for personal object of religious worship, formerly applicable to superhuman beings of heathen myth, on conversion of Teutonic races to Christianity. Term was applied to supreme being. <clears throat> Nazarim do not refer to Yahuwah by any pagan titles or names. They use his true name being careful to guard it and not allow it to be destroyed. Not using it destroys it. Torah or Torah is a relationship, not a religion. This relationship is the code of conduct for the government or kingdom of Yahuwah to reign with his bride, Yasharal, us. Human religion seeks to rebind the rift between our creator and mankind with contrived efforts and rituals invented by men, often, often inherited from pagans, pagan cultures not ordained by Yahuwah. Torah is the foundation for the relationship, and the Creator consistently refers to Torah as a marriage covenant between himself and Yasharal. Mixed worship is as adultery to Yahuwah, like a husband cheating on his wife. Our commission as Nazarene is teaching Torah to the nations, thus increasing Yasharal. The dragon hates this idea, the covenant and the Nazarene. The covenant is between Yahuwah and his bride, Yasharal. It's a marriage. The dragon hates Yasharal, and this sentiment was present in the circus fathers and those doctrinal descendants of them. When false teachers say Gentiles don't have to obey the Torah, the Torah is for the Jews, they have been influenced by false teachings, keeping them imprisoned in a stronghold. A stronghold is a mental fortress of false belief, stemming from replacement theology and supersessionism. 
Huge Errors of Christianity Yahuwah does not change. A sophisticated religious architecture exists, designed to promote a culture of rebellion. Unknowingly, the human combatants' energies have been harnessed to perform the will of their enemy. A classic Sun Tzu maneuver, the art of war, implemented by Jesuitism. Next time we will be reading the Great Commission, Witness of Yahusha, Roman Pontiff enthroned as object of worship. And I think that's all we'll have time for for the next video. I hope you guys enjoyed the lesson today. And um, now it is time to praise Yahuwah. And I'm just going to do a short little praise tonight. Torah Rabbah Abba Yahuwah Torah Rabbah Abba Yahuwah Hallelujah 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 Ruaka Baruch Haba Bashem Yahuwah Baruch Haba Bashem Yahusha Baruch Haba Bashem Ruach HaKodesh I love you all with an everlasting love, as our Abba Yahuwah and the Shamayim loves each and every one of us. Shalom and blessings, warriors of Yahuwah and the truth. Until next time, please like, subscribe, and share.